Hello everyone, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you here and thank you for having us here. So for today's sermon, as quote, I chose four verses from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. First of all, my friends, let me tell you what a pleasure and honor it is for me and for us to be here with you, to stay at your pulpit, in your church, in your congregation, yet somehow at home. It is quite funny when you are the leader of a group that visits its partner congregation and everyone knows everyone except for you. <laughs> or more correctly said, you are known only by those who had visited last year our congregation back in Transylvania in Borough. Because in the autumn of 2018, we were lucky and blessed enough to host a group of your congregation, and by doing so, we could write a new chapter of an old story that started several years ago with the help of Ruth, may she rest in peace, and with the help of Reverend Alpat from Borut and with the help of many others. Thank God this partnership started, and thank God it didn't end like many did and like many do even these days. What saves or actually keeps alive this kind of partnership? It's a great question. And the answer maybe could be dedication, love, and time. Not the time that just passes nearby us, leaving us behind while we are wondering about mm, when did all these days and years just run away without noticing it. But the time that we save and dedicate for each other. Time in which we plan the future, try to save the present day, and try to save the world in our own way. Can the world be saved? Another question. Yes, it can. Another answer. Should it be saved? Well, obviously. Yeah. And what's more, it is indisputable. It's no question that though it's meant to be and it was created to be great and good, the world is wounded, hurt, sad, sometimes sorrow, many times violent. It just lost, lost its wholeness and the holiness. Could it be healed or fixed, repaired with a new fluid and then started all over with a tabula rosa? Bad idea. I'll take it back. No, that's, that's not something we like. There's no need of another fluid. We need something else. And after all, let's admit it, this world isn't such a bad place. I mean, it just cannot be, because our homes are in it. Our beloved ones live in it. Our dreams were dreamed in it. Our hope and trust are placed in it. And it echoes our heartbeats. Yet, something and somehow must be done. But what should we do? I don't know if you've heard the story 
about a little boy who was living with his father. And his father was extremely busy. He had a job that required a lot of attention and responsibility. He had to spend a lot of time in his office and it happened too often that when he got home, he just kept on working. So his son, though uh, his father told him a thousand times what an important job he had, ran into his office every time he could and just asked his father to play with him. Still with an adult's eyes, the boy was many times, how should we say it nicely, we can so it was annoying. <laughs> I guess you know the feeling. One day, after the father arrived home and tried to work on a really important project he had, his son opened his room's door, entered like an energy boost, and asked his father to play with him. And he didn't want to. He couldn't because he had other things to do. So he came up with a plan. He had a huge world map hanging on the wall of his office. So he took that off and made a puzzle out of it. He just simply cut the map into tiny pieces and told his son that he knows a great game that is about repairing the map, about fixing it, gluing the small pieces until they become one whole again. And as we can all imagine, the father was really proud of himself for having such a great plan. It will take an eternity for the child to place every small part of the map to its right place. And for him, that means quiet. A lot of deep and holy quiet. But as we can also imagine, his plan just didn't work. Because after a couple of hours, the boy opened his father's door again, entered like a hurricane with the map in his arms, and he just laid it on the floor like it was some kind of carpet. And the father just couldn't believe his eyes. How is this possible? He asked. Asked, how could you do it? You can't fix the whole world in a couple of hours. And the kid was, oh, dad, yeah, come on, you can. <laughs> How is the question? Well, answered the boy, when you took up off the map from the wall, I've seen something on its backside. It was a man. So I just glued the parts of the man and placed them together. You're so silly, dad. You can't see what I can. Fix the man first, and the whole world will be fixed. True story, yeah. That is a true story. Our life starts with us, with our own body and soul. So why would we try to put small bandages on the huge scars of the outside world and not on our own souls. Are we whole? Are we complete? I often ask myself. And I guess we don't need to say out loud for finding the answer, because it can be seen in our eyes. We're not, not really complete, and not really whole. It's sad. But it's true. But I have a great news. Whole doesn't mean to be perfect, to be happy all the time, to be clever all the time. It doesn't mean knowing everything and having everything. It just means accepting and loving in a whole and holy way. Loving you. Not only the parts of you that I like and not loving the rest of you that I don't actually like, I just tolerate, but loving you as you are and accepting you. Not only your best characteristics or your great humor, 
but accepting you as you are, yeah, including your annoying traits too. And this sounds great, doesn't it? In the quote I chose from the Bible, Jesus says that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And when we read or when we hear this quote, we always think about the neighbor, and that's fine. But what about us? Do we love ourselves? Do we accept ourselves? And obviously, I'm not telling you to be egoistic all the time, but we should think about trying to love ourselves. Reaching wholeness and holiness starts with finding the way of loving ourselves in the best meaning of the words. Because no one can give or can be peace for others if his own soul didn't find peace. We cannot expect patience from someone who didn't need inner patience. And we can never wait for love from someone who just doesn't understand or doesn't know what love is, what it means. Only a believer can help you find faith. Only good joy can make you smile. Only bended knee can show you what humility looks like. Only true, deep, real, and everlasting love can show you the face of the Almighty who created you and me and the whole world and gave us soul to reach out for him as long as we live. To be able to find our place in this world and keen for a life that is complete, that is whole. Because in a whole life, there is space and place for the transcendental. There is place for the miracle that makes us humans, that makes us the eternal powers children who feel themselves complete only when they are heard and they can hear, they are led and they can lead. They are embraced by beauty and they are beautiful. When they laugh and win, create and start over a hundred times if needed. When they find strength and finally, after a long way and searching, they recognize that nothing, nothing on this earth and beyond should ever take over the place of love. Each and every of us is a living, unique, and precious fingerprint of our Lord. And the Holy won't arrive from outside, from above or from around us. It comes from the deepest and most sacred fountain we can find, from our hearts. Love it. Love your own heart and your own soul. Love the life-giving power. Love your neighbor, but never ever forget to love yourself, because your soul is a part of the one and true God who some years ago or several years ago had a dream and by giving a part of his own soul he made this dream become real by creating you. This life is sometimes unexplainable, sometimes unexplorable, many times unexpected and it's an unbelievable miracle that will become complete 
when you learn how to fix them, man. How to find the way of loving yourself because you are a walking chalice that carries and shares the light of God that's coming from your soul where God is alive. We are all searching for the holy and we are all trying to reach the wholeness. It's not that far. We just have to love first. Love ourselves so we can love others. May God help, help us to do so. And may he be with us in every moment we share together. Be with us whenever we recall memories we have together. Be with us whenever we think of you and you think of us from the other side of the world, yet from so close. We are having a great week or great 10 days here with you. Sorry for making your life so complicated these days. <laughs> we are looking forward to having you someday back in Transylvania in our congregation. And may God give us help and power to carry each other in our souls for a long, long time that will be blessed and full of friendships, full of true partnership, full of love for each other. So we think. Amen. Amen.